So in this episode, we're going to be reviewing the Halloween 4K HDR Steelbook Edition. Let's get started. So with everybody demanding more videos for horror movies, I figured we would move on to Halloween. And I figured what better way of doing this than the 4K HDR Steelbook Edition. Let's go ahead and open her up. So the first thing we're gonna go ahead and look at is the cover art. Now on the steel book, this is really badass because we have Michael Myers in the front, which is kind of shiny and reflective along with Halloween on the back is a pumpkin, which is also shiny and reflective and everything in the background is a matte finish. So it looks really cool in the light. I don't know how well it's showing up on camera, I'm trying to make it look cool. And on the inside, of course, we have the digital copy code, which I took out already. The movie 4K, which is also an HDR, and then there's the 1080p disc. Now the 4K HDR also has all the bonus features in 4K, which is pretty cool. But on the inside, we have Laurie Strode with her firearm aiming, which looks pretty badass. You know, I've always said this about steelbooks. I love steelbooks. And if there is a steelbook, I always try to get if it's a movie I'm going to purchase because the cover art is so amazing. Back in the 90s, cover art sucked on VHS. They sucked on DVD, but with Laserdisc, they looked amazing. And people still collect them today just for the cover art. Now, Steelbook came along and did the same exact thing with amazing cover art. Now, the cover art on the regular cover, which is like a plastic, it doesn't look as cool. These look badass, so I'd highly suggest getting this. If you have 4K HDR and you have surround sound, this thing was immaculate. Now, of course, I'm only taking the 1080p out because the 4K UHD disc is in the player in the other room. But now we're gonna go ahead and discuss the picture quality, the sound quality, and I may touch on what I thought of the movie, which I actually never did a review for, and there's a reason why. <laughs> but as far as picture and sound quality go, I'm gonna start it off with this. I have Halloween. This is the remaster 4K, all right? This thing. Picture, sound, five out of five. Whoever restored this did the most brilliant job I have ever seen in a restoration outside of Ghostbusters on 4K. With that being said, they should have hired the same guy to do this. Now, I'm not saying it was a three or two as far as the picture quality is concerned out of five, but it was a four out of five roughly. It was not perfect. I still understand how this could have been so perfect being from the 70s, <laughs> this being 2018 and it not looking as good as this. However, again, the HDR and a finely tuned Samsung OLED looked great. It just didn't hit the five out of five mark for me, even in HDR. With the HDR, it is on par with what you see in a theater, hands down. And if you wanna know what equipment I watch and listen to this on, I'm gonna put everything down in the description below. I'm not gonna sit here and bore you with all the technical shit with the clip speakers or the Samsung, this and that. I'll let you guys do it that way. I'll even tell you below how I calibrated everything and that's how I'm viewing and listening to everything. So again, if you're gonna watch this with no surround sound or with subpar speakers, you're not gonna hear it as good as I did. So the ratings may be skewed if you're watching it on like some Vizio TV or it's not calibrated the same way, it's probably gonna be lesser quality as well. Again, let's get that out of the way. Again, I still say it's about a four out of five. Visually, it was very well done in HDR and 4K. Of course, the Steelbook doesn't contribute to that in any other way. <laughs> it's just cool cover art, basically. As for the sound, the sound, if I could do halves, I would go four and a half out of five because the sound was so good. And the score is one of the best things about this movie. The score was absolutely brilliant. So where this needed to be amazing, it really shines, such as the audio. I mean, it was borderline a five out of five. The only reason I'm not giving it a five out of five is just because of how well, again, the restoration for this was. The sound for this, again, in the 70s, blew me the fuck away. Whoever, again, restored this thing needs to start doing all of Universal shit because this was incredible. So because of the sound quality being so good, it knocked this down half a point. And I know it's a shitty thing to say and you'll be like, well, can't you just judge it without bias? I could, but I'm not going to, <laughs> all right? So it's a four and a half out of five. Again, it's just the score was amazing. The explosions, the guns, everything was perfect. 
And again, I have to say I'm using a, a higher end clips speaker system with an Ankyo surround sound. So keeping that in mind, everything kind of sounds amazing on that. But that's where you really start noticing the differences in movies when they say, you know, high quality versus low quality, really notice it because it picks up every little detail. It's not all muzzled into one aspect of ohm and shit like that. But again, we're not gonna get into all those details. So again, four out of five in picture quality. And as far as this movie is concerned though, picture quality, do you really need to be concerned about that? Not so much, but as I said, with the HDR put into place with proper calibrated high-end TV, this matched the movie theater. It was spot on. So what you saw in the movie theater, if that's what you're looking to match in quality, I highly suggest getting the 4K HDR, obviously. Of course, there were some movies where that went to shit, such as Goodfellas. I don't know what happened there. <laughs> we'll save that for another time. But now let's kind of get into the special features, which are done in 4K and they are on the 4K UHD disc. So first up, we have the deleted and extended scenes, which ran about 12 minutes and 35 seconds. And the only scene out of all this that I wish they would have left in was jogging to a hanging dog, which shows Allison jogging and coming across a dog hanging from a tree. But other than that one deleted scene, everything else was pretty much boring and a waste of 12 minutes. So I'm only gonna give these deleted extended scenes a one out of five. The next bonus content is back in Haddonfield, the making of Halloween, which runs about six minutes and five seconds and was more about the actors talking about their love for Halloween, leaving only about 60 seconds of actual behind the scenes content, which is why I'm gonna go ahead and give this one a two out of five. Next up is the original Screen Queen, which ran two minutes and 32 seconds and is basically two and a half minutes of people talking about how great Jamie Lee Curtis is. So with that said, I'm gonna give it about a two out of five. Next up is The Sound of Fear, which ran three minutes and 19 seconds and was by far one of the best bonus features on this disc. This was mainly about John Carpenter talking about where he came up with the idea for the original Halloween score and went on to talk about how him and his son wanted to make the new version of the score sound even scarier but still give homage to the original. And considering the score was the best part about this whole damn movie, this was actually pretty interesting to watch and I'm gonna go ahead and give it a four out of five. Next up is Journey of the Mask, which ran two minutes and 33 seconds. And they basically talk about how they came up with the idea for the original mask and the changes they made up to this one. And is about a three out of five. And the last bonus content feature is the legacy of Halloween. This was also another really good piece of bonus content. They had a whole table sit down between John Carpenter, Jamie Lee Curtis, David Green and Jason, where they discuss where the idea for Halloween 2018 came from and what drew all of them into the script. There's actually some pretty interesting info on this regarding the original Halloween and what they think made this script really good. But again, it was way too short. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it a four out of five. So with all that said, now that we've gotten the picture quality away, the sound quality out of the way, the behind the scenes out of the way, I'm only gonna touch on a review about this movie just a little bit and I know I'm gonna get a shit ton of hate for this. But come on, this movie was overrated to death. <laughs> this movie's about a six out of 10. They had a great ending, an amazing score. Now the score was fucking brilliant. I'd give the score a 10 out of 10. That was like some Danny Elfman level shit. The score is brilliant, but we gotta get real here for a second. It was almost like they created a great ending and couldn't get to it. They created, they had to create a movie from beginning to get to the end, like a lot of movies do. A lot of movies will create a great twist ending, like a Night Shyamalan, and then they have to create something from beginning to end to get to it. And that's where this movie fell flat on its fucking ass. It's true. The, the dialogue was shit. It was stretched to death. Then you had these horrendous scenes. Oh my God. So you have a kid who was actually holding the firearm correctly, not putting his finger on the trigger aims it point blank at a fucking sheriff who gives him a jump scare, doesn't shoot the sheriff, then gets on a bus with his finger resting on the side again as it should be, has it up, and then this guy jumps out and then he instantly moves his finger from the side to the, the trigger to pull it where he was already jump scared before nothing happened. Now he's gonna go ahead and shoot this guy. Then the next issue is who the hell notices somebody's gone your freaking bus that's flipped over and approaches the guy with a firearm by going like this. Don't shoot, I don't have a gun. Like, like, like he's trying to be Michael Myers in the damn movie. It's like he's trying to scare the shit out of the kid. I'm sorry, but in the same situation, I'm going to show you guys how to handle this properly. I don't have a gun. Don't shoot. My hands are up. I'm coming up slowly. Then you bring your body out. 
What in anybody's fucking mind this guy jumps out going like he's a fucking zombie from The Walking Dead. Come on. That is just this the stupidest scene I've ever seen. The re- I don't even want to get in the rest of the movie because the rest of the movie just got dragged on and on. And it was just dialogue and it wasn't even good dialogue. It's not like something like Godfather 2 or Goodfellows-esque dialogue where you could listen to that shit for eight hours and it'd still be good. You know, this was just dragged out like crazy. <laughs> don't even get me started on some shit. Like the beginning. People keep going, the beginning was so great. The beginning was trash. That was the most annoying. You know, if those people weren't insane when they went to the insane asylum, those fucking squares out in the courtyard would have drove them fucking crazy. It was driving me crazy just staring at it for five minutes. This movie was nothing more than an 80-year-old man who found his old mask from when he was in his 20s and he put it on and he relived them golden years as if he's having some fucking midlife crisis. Now he's going to go and he's going to kill them all again. Even at the end of the movie, he gets hit and he has this old man voice going, Oh, <laughs> Thought he was going to have a stroke or a heart attack. Now, that would have been a good movie. They cage him in at the end, and then the fire comes, and he goes, oh, oh, and he just fucking dies of a heart attack. That would have made it a shit ton better. Let's get real, though. There was not in any interesting characters. We paid to see a movie where Lori fights Michael. What the hell was this shit? We bounced around to her son. Oh, wait, it's not her son anymore because we can't, you know... Remember any of the other sequels that took place. Now it's a daughter. And then we start following the granddaughter around whose story really isn't that interesting. Her dialogue is crap once again. Just to get us to the end scene of Lori versus Michael. Which is what we've been waiting for this whole damn movie. I'm pretty sure I saw a couple people falling asleep. (laughs) Pretty sure I heard some snoring. But anyways, we had a sequel. And honestly, I think the original part two was better than this. And if you don't like that, I... (laughs) You know, that's my opinion. The people I've t- spoken with stayed the same thing, you know. It's just, it dragged on way too much. The ending was good the last five minutes, <laughs> roughly, maybe. But it just wasn't that good of a movie. And I'm being nice by giving it a 6 out of 10, I think. And I think that's only because it says Halloween on it. It has Michael Myers' is the fact that it got a 6 out of 10. If this movie came out just like this, as it is, and it had no history of this, this would have been closer to maybe a 3.5 or a 4. And that's only because of the score being brilliant. And the end was pretty good. But again, it was just dragged out nonsense. That The whole movie could have been wrapped up in 30 minutes, honestly. Let's get real. Well, my final thoughts on the Steelbook are this. The cover art is fucking amazing. Inside and out, it's just some of the best cover art I've seen in a Steelbook to date. I give it a 5 out of 5. The sound DTSX, again, really good, just not perfect. It wasn't as good as a restoration from the 70s. Picture quality, amazing as well. Right up there, maybe 4.5 out of 5. I'd say it's really close. Special features were really good. But I want to know what your thoughts are down in the comment section below. Do you think the Steelbook looks badass? Did you buy it? Does it look great? Does it sound great? Also, if you hit that subscribe button, hit that notification button. Because if you don't, you won't find a kick-ass shit such as this. And be sure to give this video a big thumbs up. Because 150 likes on this video will get you another horror review video on this channel. And don't forget merch link down in the description below. Eat, sleep, slash, repeat. The four essentials for any asymmetrical survival horror gamer. And as always... I'll see you next time.